seems like a civilization of that kind of intelligence and advancement. It doesn't seem like it seems like they'd be smart enough to avoid some sort of astro <laughs> astronomical cataclysm from an asteroid or a comet. Maybe. You know? I mean, maybe they're trying to warn us too. That's that's the other thing that's really interesting about this is that you know, maybe they saw it coming and maybe they built monuments as a warning. Um there seems to be some some uh, validity to this. Like there, there is uh, Martin Sweatman's done. He's a he's a doctor um, in Scotland. I think he's a University of Edinburgh. Um, he's looked at Gobekli Tepe as some sort of a cosmic warning sign, like that it was marking its 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 stone circles and the animals and the constant and and the the depictions on it represent. Um, constellations and and cosmically significant times. So he he sort of he's got a whole book uh, written about it, where he he's pointing out that it's possible that they were actually they're telling us about a period of time uh, when when this happened, and uh, it may be possible that they're actually trying to that these might be messages passed through town down through time to warn us. The Sphinx itself might be uh, something like that. It might have been built as a marker pointing at the age of Leo on the horizon. Uh, this is like part of Boval's um, uh, theory about the 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 the, uh, the Orion correlation and the Sphinx uh, aiming at the age of Leo. When according, according to that procession of the equinoxes circle, that maybe that was it was a message coming at us from that time as well. Wait, the, what the, is that? What is going on with the with the Sphinx? It's pointing at well. So it, if if you if you go with the dating of, of if you go with the Sphinx being a lion originally. Uh, for sure, its head was recarved at some right. point. Yeah. But if it was a lion, then then it would have been pointing at when the sun rose on the solstice directly at – it would have been in the age of like the house of Leo 10,500 years ago, so right around the Younger Dryas period. So it would have been lined up with the Leo the lion as a constellation. It so, would have been built 10,500 years ago? Yeah, so it, it would have been at the right constellation. Because, and that, remember, that's the dating that Shock's given it due to erosion – analysis and everything but that also happens to line up with the constellation of leo uh for the age of the 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 procession of the equinoxes we would have been in the age of leo when that happened so there's some suggestion that maybe that's Wait, isn't that significant two thousand years after um two thousand years after the younger dryas uh was it before or after it was it was it was right on the younger dryas younger dryas was like 12,000 right 12,800 to 11,600 years ago so right. that's that's the that's the period yeah so 12,800 to 11,600 years ago is like the period of the younger dryas and there's a spike before and after so i think the sphinx with leo sits in there somewhere before or after the younger dryas I think either during or just after. During or just after. Just after. Okay. Yeah. okay. But but again, it's possible that the Sphinx is even older. Um, I've heard Robert Shock say that too. Like it could be vastly older than that still. But mm. the point is that maybe when you say a global civilization like that might have been able to see it coming or dodge it. I mean, I don't think we're only just now starting to develop and think about the tech technology involved in like maybe deflecting an asteroid coming at us. I think we're decades away from actually being able to do something about one. I mean, we care more about getting the gold off of it. <laughs> we probably would. Yeah, let's mine it. Yeah, let's let it, let it hit us and we'll deal with it afterwards. We'll get all the, it's full of platinum. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or maybe it'd be like maybe oh, Nancy Pelosi is, will perfect. go up there and uh, <laughs> fucking get some gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she'll know it's coming and then yeah. trade some stocks <laughs> and make the profits. Yeah. Asteroid mining companies oh, going up. Mm. Could you imagine, Paul? <laughs> buy some stocks yeah mm. let him out of let him out of jail for his DUI yet I don't know um, mm. but yeah I don't know but there's some there's some like a cycle to this thing too it does seem like the further back in time you go it seems like every there's almost a periodicity to cataclysm and we're we're approaching it now like a 12,000 year cycle almost that's that seems to keep happening so who knows um, whether or not it's a torrid meteor stream or it's a sun it's a sun explosion thing. I think that- What about volcanoes? Volcano, for sure. Volcanoes can cause like proper amount of volcanoes. There's been some speculation. My buddy, Matt, at Ancient Architects Channel has been on kind of a mainstream tear lately. And he's um he's kind of been poking at the idea that maybe it was volcanoes that caused the Younger Dryas and not, uh, not a comet impact. Like there's tons of volcanic eruptions that happen around that time. Uh, one thing I've been wanting to point out to him is, like, you know, what causes tons of volcanic eruptions is is cosmic impacts. Like, oh, really? Yeah. So cosmic impacts actually cause 
earthquakes, volcanism, tidal waves, hurricanes, massive weather events. Like they're almost like we can't do anything about those events on their own. But there's one thing that kind of is the source of most of the really big extinction events, and that's cosmic impacts. And that's the one thing that we stand a remote chance of actually doing something about if we really bent our back to it and got Don't into they it. say that the Yellowstone uh, volcano Super erupts volcano? like every 600,000 years? Something like that. And the last time it erupted was right yeah. exactly 600,000 years ago from now. Yeah, that would be a bad news. It would certainly be bad news for the East Coast, um, this side, because the winds, would it would blow from there for a hit this side of the country the east coast i think a lot i don't know if yellowstone on its own would bring down civilization it would certainly right. slow us down um and it would be a tremendous bad news day uh but yeah, i don't know if it, it it on its own is quite big enough to to fully bring down civilization uh it'd probably be close but but yeah it's it's i know that they're saying that about yellowstone it's an interesting interesting site in fact the you think about Yellowstone. It was actually, it was. I know Randall talked about this on on your podcast too. But it was the it was what spewed up all the basalt that made up Eastern Washington State. So that 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 wound in the in the mantle of the Earth that's spewing up this material is what was responsible millions and millions of years ago for all the basalt plateaus of Eastern Washington State. And then that's kind of like the crust has shifted since then, mm-hmm. and now it's over on Yellowstone in Montana. And then uh, yeah, but if that goes, it'll it'll make some noise. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And that makes me think about like, to, like if we were to get wiped out by a volcano or a cosmic impact right now, there would be no evidence of us. It'd be very little. It's a, I, it's a fun, it, not a fun Except thing, for Mount Rushmore and Mount what, Rushmore, what else? The Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam. Okay. Yeah. Suez Canal, like Panama Canal. You might, yeah. So you might eventually go, you know, thousands of years into the next civilization and then they finally develop enough engineering capability to go, holy crap, somebody dug a ditch between the oceans, you know? Yeah. Like the, the canals right. and stuff. Yeah, and there wouldn't be much left. Yeah, Hoover Dam, maybe Mount Rushmore. Those were the gods. <laughs> those were the those were the the gods of that time. Yeah, I don't know, it, but for sure, within a couple generations, I mean, of something like that happening, technology goes away so fast. You'd have like people sitting around campfires telling stories about cell phones and plasma TVs. It'd be like right. magical device that we can we could talk across the mm. world. Maybe there'd be people replicating it and making little mm. shiny black rocks that they would hold up and try and right. use ceremony to capture the, 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 the capability and technology, which I think is exactly what happened in ancient Egypt too. They were trying to use ceremony and religion to capture the significance and, 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 you know, technology mm. that happened. They, yeah, they might've had some understanding of well, when the pyramid worked, it did this. So we're just going to like dance around it for a while with fire and yell at it and maybe it'll turn on again. I don't right. know.